Documents obtained by Checkpoint have revealed numerous issues and a serious lack of consultation before the launch of the police's armed response teams. The trials were launched in counties Manukau, Waikato and Canterbury last year in response to the Christchurch mosque attacks. But internal documents obtained by Checkpoint under the Official Information Act detail numerous issues. And as Nick Truebridge reports, papers show racism training has also been proposed to curb the ART's potential impact impact on Māori communities. Many prominent Māori have been quick to condemn the police's armed response team trials. Now, official police documents appear to show their concerns are warranted. A major risk identified by the working group overseeing the trial was that armed response teams could be seen to disadvantage Māori. Police even proposed holding bias training with officers to mitigate that risk. We are yet to address institutional racism in the New Zealand police. We know that there are officers out there, it's been in news reports and goodness knows what, in fact I think somebody should OIA the HR reports quite frankly, Um, but uh, we know that this has been a long entrenched problem within the New Zealand police for a very long time. It has not been resolved, it has not been addressed um, where any reasonable person would think that a police force should uh, should be uh, fair, equitable and unbiased. That's New Zealand Māori Council Executive Director Matthew Tukaki. The trial's wrapped up in April, but he's worried armed response teams could become permanent and is concerned about what this could mean for his people. I remember the dark days when um, uh, when the uh, the Samoan and Pacific Island community were being targeted by immigration officers as well. I mean, have we not learned the lessons of where we went wrong before? Um, I would argue strongly we've got a lot more lessons to learn if we if we can't even get this one right. And New Zealand police is well aware of the problem. A communications plan released to Checkpoint under the Official Information Act identifies the risk of ARTs being seen as a new force to use against Māori. It goes on to say this could be mitigated by actively working with communities, partners and the justice sector to improve outcomes for Māori. But Tukaki has other ideas. It's about the individuals who made the decision that thought it was acceptable to trial something where they know evidence, no strategic direction, uh, no good um, governance over the whole thing, or even consultation with Māori. Uh, so no, the New Zealand government and the New Zealand police were very clear what the, what the mood of the New Zealand Māori Council was. Uh, and it also begs the question um, that we have nearly 1,000 New Zealand Māori wardens out there who also have significant powers and are warranted. Um, and they are the people uh, that we could have a look at activating more um, to help with incidents uh, where they involve Māori whānau and communities. Armed response teams were introduced following the deadly Christchurch mosque shootings last March, but another document reveals New Zealand police undertook limited consultation with Māori and consultation with Muslim communities was also limited. All of this has Tukaki questioning why the trials went ahead at all. It is absolutely silly that the risk assessment that was made um, didn't stop this whole thing from happening at the beginning until they had worked out what their overall strategic plan was. Um, But no, somebody thought it was a good idea and, and, and off they went. The police would not be interviewed for this story, but Police Association President Chris Carhill says New Zealand police should come under fire for its poor attempt at consultation. Well, I certainly think it's a fair criticism that due to the quick introduction of these, insufficient consultation was done, not just with Māori, but with actually the wider community as well. And that's necessary, that should take place. However, he believes ARTs will ultimately help not hurt Māori. I think it's also very important to remember that Māori aren't only overrepresented in crime statistics, but also very much overrepresented in victimisations. And these firearms are being used disproportionately against Māori and other Uh, minority ethnic communities, so they are being protected by these ARTs as well. And it's real worth remembering that throughout the trial of ARTs, no no officer had to shoot someone, but they did resolve a number of serious incidents safely, and that is a big uh, plus for the trial. Police documents show ARTs are meant to be focused on call-outs where there is significant risk to staff or public. Police refused to release all documents related to the trial, but an incident report for its first two months show officers mostly followed up on cars and vehicles acting suspiciously. Despite that, Cahill says there is a need for armed response teams, claiming police are dealing with more firearms incidents than ever before. I think the issue we have 
also is with the change in environments, um, the AOS model of staff being called out, having to go to a base, equip themselves and then travel to a scene has serious limitations. So having staff available with expertise and equipment to attend immediately is advantageous. But that has probably not been communicated very well, is that there was never going to be a case where these specialist squads could go from job to job of the serious firearms nature. They were always going to have to do such things as um, dangerous vehicle stops, uh, assisted search warrants, that sort of thing. The model of having them waiting around like a fire uh, brigade for a fire simply doesn't work in the police environment, and they need to be deployed uh, 24-7 while they are actually working. An October 2019 briefing paper shows even before the trial started, police were already expecting it would show ART's improved officers' ability to respond to the most serious of jobs, while also minimising risks to the public. But a police spokeswoman says it's premature to determine what the evaluation might find. We recognise the ultimate question of the style of policing we adopt needs to reflect a wider conversation across our whole community, balanced with the need to make sure we can keep the public and our people safe. Any options that come out of the review will be consulted with communities as part of our efforts to take a collaborative approach to policing. How the public feels is important as we police with consent of the public, and that is a privilege. New Zealand Police will release its evaluation next month. For Checkpoint, Nick Trubridge.